on the CEO of the network. All right, we are back in open session, um, continuing with our agenda under new business and the budget message up to continue mortgage. So this is just really a very, um, you know, kind of like a 30,000 foot view of the budget message. The, as I've talked about previously, um, the team at central office, uh, it does try whenever possible to stay at that 3% threshold as we are um, regularly asked to do. Uh, and, and that really is, is all of them. Is not it is no longer sustainable. Our collective bargaining agreements we, we were projecting overall in the four percent range um, annually this year. This is a projection. We are projecting a twelve percent increase um, in health insurance because Minuteman and Shoba Health Group is dissolving. Regular transportation. Our previous bid from five years ago was a twenty four percent increase over three years. Um, what I can share at this point is the bid that we have received for the next three years is higher than 24 um, percent by uh, by uh, what I would consider to be a, a significant amount. Um, we did only receive one bid again, so there is some negotiation that I'm expecting to take place there. Um, I did hear from Jay Sullivan at the Department of Ed who works in the finance office. and. He feels pretty strongly that we can require families to sign up for buses. Um, again, doesn't feel as though we necessarily have, um, we'd be in a great situation if a family decided to change their minds. But he said, you can certainly, he said there could be a waiting period. He said, unfortunately, that period could go into the next school year. He said, if you don't have the bus. I'm sorry, I missed that. Who's telling you that? Jay Sullivan. He's the director of finance of the Department of Ed. He does uh, a lot of work with Mars. Um, he ran a. He, he Everything I've been hearing for the last, you know, 13, 14 years is because we are regional. Mm -hmm. And one of the stipulations of a regional, of forming a regional uh, district was that there will be a seat on a bus for every student in the district. That's the premise that I've, I've been working yeah. to off of, as, as you know. Um, but it but, doesn't say simultaneously. I think it's always been a crush. That we will we will provide a seat for every student. It doesn't say at a point in time you must have three thousand seats. I, I, I did explain to him that we're really experiencing a change right now because of COVID and the number of kids that are being driven to school, we have a lot of buses that aren't built to capacity. Which I, I um, have separate issues with the amount of pickups and drop-offs. Yes. From a safety. Oh, absolutely. And, and he did say that, you know, if, if you count it in a way that you're looking to manage the district's resources to the best of your ability and save the taxpayers, he said, hopefully people will take that as we're going to sign up or not sign up and potentially <clears throat> help the district's bottom line, potentially help our real estate taxes in turn. Um, but I don't know but he, he, he did advise me. He, he presented to all of Mars um, last week. Um, and he feels as though that we would be on strong footing in doing this. He said there are other districts out there that do it. He said not a lot of them do, but he said there are districts that do it. And he said, he basically said to me, nothing ventured, nothing gained. He said, if you can potentially save money and it works out, um, and the, you know, families respond and it works out for you, he said, great. He said, what are the odds that you're not going to have a seat on a bus if a few people change their minds? And I said, we likely would. Um, and he said, you'd be fine. But he said, if large numbers of people change their mind. He said, you could end up in a problem. He said, and that's when you say, I'm trying to manage the district's resources to the best of my ability. I need people to really look at the upcoming year and make a commitment, either you're going to drive or take the bus. Uh, so he did recommend that we give it, that we, that we give it a try um, based, on, based on that. And he said, you shouldn't be so tight that if a few people change, that there's no room for them on a bus. Um, so it's something we can certainly consider. For, for, um, for next year. And if it, it can Have we asked the legal opinion of the ESE? <laughs> it's their rule. I can. Um, I can. I would hate to, you know. Um, Generally speaking, the attorneys do send you back to Jay at Desi. I mean, I can check with Nick um, to get his opinion as well, but I can certainly check with Desi. But Jay is generally the. Um, okay, he tends to be the. He's not an attorney. Um, so I can I can certainly check to get legal um, to get legal counsel's opinion. 
Or whether it be from the FCC or from the FCC to have a legal, have their legal. Okay. Um, so actually, I have to get in touch with uh, Mary Ellen, uh, not Mary Ellen. Morning. <laughs> no, um, what they're working with the regional agreement on. Michelle Griffin. And yes. Because I haven't heard back from them. Okay. Um, but everything I send them, every question I send them, they send to their legal team. Okay, I can certainly um, check. I think I, I I think making that drastic of a change after this many years, mm -hmm. everyone understanding it differently, I would feel a lot better if their legal department said yes. Okay, I can does that do that. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. It does. I I know budgets being budgets, but I, I really would rather encourage people to take the bus than do drop off because. Mm -hmm. I, the drop off that is a certain phone book both is just it's home. Yeah. I mean, so something he compared, he, he actually compared it to lunch. He said, you know, we offer a free lunch. He said, but if kids don't sign up for it, you know, at the elementary school, that child may not be getting lunch that day. Um, he said, it's it's very, you know, he said, but we throw away lunches for kids that sign up and that are absent. But he said, if you didn't sign up for it, he kept, he kept going back to the free lunch and signing up for lunches. Again, but I I, I'm better, happy to check with legal. I would, I would feel better if his legal team says, yes, you are okay. right to tell them this. I can do that. We, um, and I, I agree. You know, I, the buses are a safer issue as far as the amount of cars that take up. I, even back before COVID, yep. um, when I used to look at the yeah. lines at the different schools uh, with my kids, it was, it was long and um, not always great uh, traffic uh, patterns or places mm -hmm. for them to wait. Um, so I have no problem encouraging them, but that separate from the answer of whether we can. Oh, hundred percent separate. Just um, yeah. finding ways to discourage whether it's don't allow them to pick up until the last bus is gone or something that just mm -hmm. makes it yeah a little more difficult. And the state has the safe bus to school program where they encourage walkers and bikers and bus riders and not individual cars and pass traffic. It's mm -hmm. safety at the crosswalk. I mean, you name it, it's a problem of issues. Um, so. Okay, so that's regular ed transportation, special ed transportation. We actually we um, got, got a decent rate there. It's a 15% increase, so 5% um, for the next three years. Um, the, another question mark that we don't know about is um, how out of district placements are going to be handled. As you know, there was a 14% increase. There is supposed to be funding coming back to us from that from the state, but we have not heard as of yet as to what that funding is going to look like and how much it's going to be. Uh, that said, we also don't know what the rates are going to look like for out-of-district placements next year, because um, those are not out as of yet. So all of those things put us over 3%. Some of the other challenges that we're facing is that um, we did fund some positions through ESSER. Um, many of those are necessary now. Um, most of them were not, um, and, and we planned well with that, but there are other positions that we needed uh, that were temporarily funded through ESSER, most of them coming in, in the form of special education positions. We've seen a significant increase in special education testing um, from summer movements, DCF placements, and so on. So it's really giving us very little flexibility um, to deal with some of the unknowns and things we haven't planned for when those things happen. Um, the overall budget picture looks as though to be right now a 7.18% budget increase. That's outlined in, in the messages to um, how those increases um, basically fall out. And then we're looking at expenditures, just some of the staffing increases that we have seen um, from FY24 that will carry into 25. Again, a, a lot of, um, you know, whenever we're, we, generally speaking, if we're adding a teacher, it's because of the class size policy. Um, special education inclusion teacher, special education teacher, so multiple special education teachers. Um, that are mandated by the federal government and the state government in order to be in compliance with IEPs. You see a couple ELL specialists. Those positions, too, were mandated by DESE beginning last year. Those were positions that we did not previously, we were not previously mandated to fund. We are now, pre, we are now currently mandated to fund those positions um, as a district. Um, some of the increases we saw from 2025 from ESSER, um, some of the grants manager uh, was paid for through that. We had multiple teaching positions paid for through that. Um, a behavior two behavior techs at Barnum Brook. 
the library paraprofessionals, a couple special education paraprofessionals, again, to um, in order to help us meet those IEPs. And then we do have a few uh, requests that we're looking to add in FY25. We're looking to add a theater teacher uh, to help round out our, um, our arts and our arts rotation at the middle school. Right now, there is a shared art uh, drama teacher between this assistant and Hawthorne Brook. It does create some schedule problems as well. We're looking to fully fund that position so that both schools have their own uh, theater and or drama teacher. Uh, we're looking to start a middle school LEAP program for if the numbers um, basically call for it at Hawthorne Brook. That would also entail, a, in addition to a teacher, a, a paraprofessional looking to add a counselor, again, to help with the caseload at Nisitissa Middle School. And then we're looking at, again, potentially reinstituting the athletic trainer um, because there's somewhat of a shortage there in finding people to cover those, to cover some of our games now. And also an additional tech help out with um, what is essentially now uh, a district that has a, a, a great deal of technology that is left over from, from COVID. They have Chromebooks that have to be serviced and whatnot, and um, the department would like to see some additional help there. Again, just looking at uh, if you if you look at the special ed numbers in the 504s right now, we are looking at a 35 percent. 35 percent of our students require either special education or 504 services. That is just over 10 percent above the state average. Uh, so that does obviously um, entail hiring additional teachers, paraprofessional service providers to remain in compliance, again, with those state and federal laws. In addition to that, we're looking at the challenge of negotiating five different contracts. Um, we did do a compensation study that we did, that we did pay close attention to during this process. I, I had Anne Marie go through this. Um, I looked through it myself to make sure that we were in line with making sure that we were offering um, offering what was comparable to surrounding districts. Again, districts that are close to us, but also other regionals um, and some districts to our west as well that was shared with the committee. So again, right now, overall, we are looking at an increase or the need for an override that will right now is in between three to three and a half million dollars. It's, it's a lot of money, but there's still an awful lot of unknowns, as I said, Busing is still somewhat of an unknown. Health insurance is an unknown. And um, Chapter 766 school tuition, which is the out of district placements are unknowns. And on top of that, we don't have the governor's numbers as of yet, but that's what we're projecting. Generally speaking, we have been pretty close with that. That is without making any reductions um, to the current budget. So that's basically carrying what we have to carry. There, there are a few reductions, but it, that because that there's not a need for them anymore. But in order to maintain um, level services, with the exception of a couple ads, which is really, again, the drama teacher, the full-time drama teacher, half and half at both middle schools, uh, the potential for a tech person and the potential for an athletic trainer, those are the ones that, you know, are kind of extras. But the special ed positions, which are new positions, are things that um, the district is going to have to find a way to fund those. That's what I have at this point. We'll obviously work on this. Uh, we are beginning to look at a potential reduction plan should we have to make a reduction that will be shared with finance. Uh, but it's definitely going to be um, a challenging budget season uh, where we are going to work with a PR firm. I'm going to make sure that I get out of the communities and make visits to the councils on aging, the senior centers, to make sure that the community members are hearing why the budget is what it is and try to, in the best way possible, explain why we need the money that we need in order to move forward in the school district. Yes. How, how well attended were the budget forums and what is the feel you get from town leadership? So from, from town leadership, um, the, the, forums have been, the forums have been good. Uh, the only real drawback with the forums is that it's really only the um, town managers that are coming. Uh, Pepperell has been bringing a, a board of selectmen member um, who's been to most, but outside of that, uh, it's not, I mean, I, originally, and I, I, I do ask, you know, I'd like to have a, 
board of selectmen member, a FinCon member, and the TM, it, it, it's hard to do. And I, I do try to work around their schedules. So I, I do think part of it is because uh, they may not have the availability, but pretty much every meeting with the exception of one, we've had, I think, five at this point. Um, I've had all three TMs there. I, I think I think they understand it. Um, they understand, um, it, you know, I think it's helpful that a, a couple of our towns will likely need overrides anyway. So I think being able to put the school in with that override will be helpful. Um, but it's not, um, it, it's not something where I'm being, um, or, or we are being told you're asking for too much. I did actually send an invite out today to the three TMs to, to say, you know, if you'd like to come and do a walkthrough of some of our buildings and see what's happening in our buildings, please let me know. I'm happy to facilitate those visits so they can actually go into an elementary classroom, a sub-separate classroom, a middle school classroom, and see what the teachers paraprofessionals, counselors are doing on a day in day out basis, just so that they're able to see it. Because um, you know, I, I do feel uh, not everyone recognizes how much education has changed since the day of been in school. So I think having the opportunity to see that um, will potentially um, help us even more. But they, they, they've been collaborative meetings. So they have been sharing their numbers with us. Um, it's, it's just gonna be a tight seat. And I think it really helped that Eric was on the yes. negotiations and that, I mean, both sides got to hear each other. Yes. And so I think that was a positive for both sides. <laughs> we'll keep working on it. Well, uh, next up here, the 2024-25 district calendar. Are there any substantial differences over this year? There, there really aren't, other than the fact that Robin really did a, a fantastic job at, at organizing it um, and making it so that it's really user-friendly. And I know she came up with some additional ideas uh, prior to today's meeting. So I think there'll be some additional changes as well, but she worked really hard on it. Um, we've collaborated with the union on it. Um, the only the only significant change, I, I, I guess that you would say is that um, we did move the March um, parent conferences to Thursday, Friday, as opposed to Monday, Tuesday at the request of the teachers union. Um, outside of that, I don't think there were really any significant changes and the union did did have eyes on this, and they and they have approved it. It's always a fear that I, I put that we missed a day, but several people have looked at it. And we several coming, people will look at it yes. before it's actually published. Yes. Um, so I encourage you to please take a look at it. Yeah. It's 184 days for staff and 180 for everyone else. I know something that's usually of contention is how many full weeks there are, especially at the elementary school. Um, when there's a day off or a half a day within a week, um, it really disrupts their flow and their yes. week. Um, and, and we do try to avoid that. I, we, we really do, uh, it, to, if, yeah. if possible. But right. there's so many weeks where, mm -hmm. and then you, I mean, then you have to avoid having PD days too close to the previous month. Yeah, um, you know, I understand. It's not an easy uh, job, and actually, I was counting out the full number of full weeks and we're on par with what we typically do. Um, but just areas to think about <clears throat> if something can be different is I'm looking at uh, part of this, nothing we're doing is just holidays and where they fall. Mm -hmm. uh, but November has one full week. December has one full week. Um, and then you have March has one full week. So like November, that's voting day. No, no, no. I said, I said, that's what so I said. That's some of it is not necessarily. That's what makes sense. And, and I do, I do want to point something out just so you're aware, because I, I'm going to guess that there will be complaints about this. Um, I know that in the community where I live, um, they've already voted their calendar in, and they had June, uh, January second and third off. Um, I do not feel as though we have the luxury to give two days, um, just because of the potential for weather here. Um, 
again, uh, jumps and belt, let's give them two full weeks. Why come back on a Thursday or Friday? Well, we may need that Thursday and Friday come June. So with the, uh, is there, a, uh, is there a concern though that the tenants will be so low on those days that it'll cost us? I, I I think overall, again, the later you go into June, and, and MCAS is not the end all be all, but a lot of, I mean, you could be, we could be missing two days of instruction that could help with the MCAS as opposed to going to school in June, when for the most part, um, you know, you get to a certain point in June and there's not much teaching happening. Uh, the kids don't want to be there. Um, most people don't want to be there if it's nice outside, if it's summer weather. And I, I just feel like if we can avoid going deep into June, if at all possible. The other piece is, is that we are trying to, uh, you, we have Juneteenth now that you want to try to avoid. Um, you know, you don't want to have a situation where, um, you know, we get out on, for some reason, we've had too many days when we get out on the 20th. Well, we go to school on the 18th. We have the 19th off. And now we're going to come back to school on Friday the 20th. I think the attendance will be equally as bad, if not worse. Yeah. I think it's, I think two, the second and third is fine because everybody realizes Wednesday is the first and usually there's not that extra two days. Right. right. I mean, if, if we have a bad winter, I mean, we yeah. could go to, we could end up going to school yeah. really. They want their kids back in school, trust me. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, they're out the 21st. Like, like, it's not, it's actually, like, it's not the 20th. Like, yeah. we're, our last day is the 20th. Like, and I think it's a huge stretch. Yeah. yeah. And I think that um, they actually want the summer back yeah. and would rather have their winter. Well, it's the 12th without snow days. No, I'm just saying the December. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm taking, oh, that's right. Taking the second and third off. Yeah. Like, the last day in December here is the 20th. Like it's not that we're not going up to the 23rd or like there's actually additional days built in on the front end of it. Right. Just the way the calendar. Yeah, goes. you're right. Is that 20th going to be a half day? Hmm? It does not have to be a half day. It's, it's always been a half day. It does not have to be a half day. Is there something other than the custodial contract? Though? I don't think there's I, um, the custodial. So we would have to look at the custodial contract because the custodial and the secretarial contract, both of them tend to have these um, days where if the holiday falls on a particular day, then the Friday or Monday yeah. previous is a half day. Um, and custodial and secretarial both have that in their contracts, um, which is, I'm almost positive why the 23rd is off, because it would be a, it would be a half day anyway, because Christmas Eve would be celebrated on the 23rd by the secretarial and custodial that, units. That I'm not sure about the 20th. I would have to check that. Five days before the holiday. But, but I, I have no issue with the 20th being a full day. I, Especially where they do have, um, it is a long vacation, even, even with going to school on the second and third, which they, it's a much longer vacation than they had this year. I think you make the 20th the PD day. That would make everyone happy. Do you think that's the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> then we really won't have anyone. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know what we'll call it. It's so, no, it's good. I do like the new layout too. It is it's too. very easy yes. to Thank read. You. Yeah. Yep. So for the for the second and we'll have, we have a second and a third page that will go with this. And um, I was showing it to Lisa, and she suggested we bring it to policy so we could. And what I was trying to do on the second page is have some real quick, you know, absentee numbers, the numbers for the schools, what time the schools start, what time they the dismissal is the the two and a half hour um, late starts, what those times are. So, you know, I still print this out and I hang it, you know, so something that's quick. So if you have an idea, hey, Robin, I think we should include this, like yeah. Lisa today said, I think we should include D bus and Van Bull bus numbers. Um, I have a link to the handbooks. Um, we have the um, holidays, uh, the interfaith holiday. I have a link to that. I have a link to all the Massachusetts holidays. And then the policy in regards to um, attendance in holidays, so that students, you know, celebrating different holidays, that um, staff is aware of that and they're excused, those types of things. So, 
um, but that's still a work in progress. Are the two Wednesdays in March that are a late start early release? Are those scheduled for like PD or anything like that? It will be. I actually, they had traditionally been February and April days, but when we have vacations yeah. in February and April, in March, I, I I eliminated the February and April PD days because of, because of the vacation and um, yeah. I think there's our, I think there's another holiday built in there. Um, the we move to March. March used to be the stretch. Yeah, March used to be the stretch month where it, it everybody was off. Yeah, March used to be the stretch month where everybody was full time. That was like the longest month of the year. Yeah. Well, so because you had no days off. No, you got well, you got the 21 days of March. But four of those four paper eight uh, half days. No. But May yeah. you have 21 days and only one of them is a half day. Yeah. That's the that's the longer one. Now it is. But there is that gas testing during that time, so it well, makes it more challenging. More yeah. Good point. Yeah, what I do is I usually look at last year's calendar. I try to mirror it. Yeah. Yeah, physically, yeah, as much as we end up doing that. Just different things to watch for when holidays fall differently and things like that. And PD can change a little bit, but just just being conscious of those full weeks when yeah. you can. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I would move to approve uh, the school calendar as uh, to, as submitted here. I'll second. Um, were we going to look at December 20th, maybe making that a full day and being the day of the year, or are we pretty sure that that's not? Well, won't get an extra day. Don't get an extra day. Oh, Cat yeah. count as uh, part of the 180. Okay. Um, and we've always, uh, it's just been, you know, uh, students and staff all look at those major holidays and get half a day before you do a Christmas or okay. something like that. Yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah. It does. With the different contracts. Okay. Um, just to obviously uh, brought on them under early release late start, your June 20th. It's 180th with possibility, but under the Oh, I have to because it, there was a typo, so yeah. thank you for that. And then and again, just the way my brain works, the red to me means there's no school. The red means no. <laughs> I don't want to put the red and the yellow, but you're saying it's a school color. Yeah. Oh, it, God. I think it's a school color thing. No, that's fine. But I, I look at the red and I go, oh, there's no school. You can say red school. Days red school. Red means school. I don't yellow. really see that. I mean, and the yellow would be the highway and the special days. So a super nice <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'll I'll do my best. Hey, can you make I'm all the days green? Right can you make all the yellow school days green? <laughs> I think it's fine, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so just uh, just the twentieth. Yeah, June twentieth for the body. And the June twelfth. Yeah, should be eleven. Yeah, I had um the December. I had I had fourteen days, but we actually had fifteen days. So I guess I shipped everything and I didn't update it. So thank you. Okay. Great. Yeah. What does Aqua Marine say to you? <laughs> What? Aqua marine. Like, what is that? It's about like a marine. <laughs> yeah. It's about like a parent teacher conference where it's like chill vibes. Yeah. And then what is um, June 6th? Graduation. It's graduation. Okay. Yeah, I don't... It's at the bottom. That one's graduation. Oh, wait. Right. 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 I can move it up. Thank you. Any other comments? Anything? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. June sixth is also D Day. Thank you, Dave. Well, next we have the North Middlesex Regional High School and Accelerated Repairs DAN. That's Ben. I have a whole yes, sheet to read. Yep. 
Yeah, you are right. Vote second. of the North Middlesex Regional School District School Committee. I, the district secretary, do I read that part too? No. No, you uh, just do the motion. Just vote. Just vote. vote. Okay. So I move that. I move that we hereby determine in accordance with uh, general law chapter 70B that the cost of the North one North Mid no, new district high school project authorized by a vote of the committee passed on February 10th, 2014 to Larnum Brook School Feasibility Study project authorized by the vote of the committee passed on September 12th, 2016. Number three, uh, Health Larnum Brook School Feasibility Study project authorized by a vote of the committee passed on September 12th, 2016. Four, Barnum Brook Elementary School renovations project authorized by a vote of the community passed on September 12, 2016. Five, Hawthorne Brook Middle School renovations project authorized by a vote of the district passed on April 3rd, 2017. And six, one Cook Early Childhood Center renovations project authorized by a vote of the community passed on April 3rd, 2017. Each being financed with proceeds of a portion of the notes defined below together with all the other bonds notes of the district previously issued to pay costs of these projects does not exceed the portion of the total cost of the projects that are not being paid by the school facilities grant. And we hereby approve the insurance of notes and bonds to finance these projects under general law chapter 70. To approve the sale of 18721711 dollars four per four and a quarter percent general obligation fund anticipation notes the notes of the district dated february 2nd 2004 and payable january oh 2000 okay the district dated february 2nd 2024 and payable january 30th 2025 to Oppenheimer and Company Inc. at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of $108,290.07. That in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of the note of sale and and preliminary official statement dated January 10th, 2024, and the final official statement dated January 17th, 2024, each in such form as many as approved by the district treasurer by and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. The district treasurer and the chair committee be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver the significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with SEC Rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond counsel to the district, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefit of the holders of the notes from time to time. That we authorize the direct, authorize and direct the district treasurer to establish post insurance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the district treasurer and bond council deem it sufficient. Or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order and to in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of notes and to comply with relevant security law, securities laws. That all that oh, that any certificates or documents relating to the notes collectively, the documents may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded in the original, and all of which shall constitute one and the same document delivery of an executed counterpart of the signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manual executed counterpart signature page to such document. And electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purposes of the document and all matters relating hereto or thereto having the same legal effect as original signatures. And each member of the committee, this uh, district secretary and the 
and the district treasurer be and here by our authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, re receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. <laughs> done that Wait, can you repeat that first? <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you have any questions or comments before we vote? Yeah. Fairly standard procedure. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> I do have a question. Any special things since it is money appropriation or whatever, is, do we have to take the whole public before we miss this up? No, I don't. Okay. I don't believe oh, so. It, 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 is, it, it, it is. is I know. <laughs> it needs to be a two thirds <laughs> vote. I know okay. that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. well, it needs to be two thirds for any monetary. Um, two thirds of the full committee, oh, not oh, just okay. who's here. Right. Okay. okay. Um, is, is good. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Then All right. Then. Next up, enterprise and Veterans Nutrition Administration will leave for active action plan. I think there's also a motion for that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're not meeting the standards for charging in. Is that the gist of it? That's the gist of it. Yeah. yeah and this is just, just to jump in here, this is this is for adult meals, not student meals. Yeah. So they they did they took a look at the prices of our meals and um are making a had put that on our um our review that our adult prices are not, um, they, they need to be at least equal to the, what the federal government re reimburses the district for, or we end up subsidizing the federal, the federal program ends up subsidizing adult meals. So we're asking if the committee would consider raising the price of the adult meals, which I think we haven't done in many years. So, um, and the number was like 4.99 and just under $3. So it made sense for breakfast to be the $3 and for lunch to be the $5 to make that a little simpler on the map for everybody. And now, Nancy, when do we make this effective immediately? Like, I mean, Friday or do we say Monday? Yeah, I mean, I'd say whenever, I mean, it'll take a couple of days to get the paper, the uh, system changed, but um, whatever, whatever, I was fine, I'm sure. I mean, if you can get it, Maybe Monday makes sense. One second. Um, I make a motion to increase the pricing to a minimum USDA requirement of five dollars for adult lunches and three dollars for adult breakfast. Effective. Effective. Monday, Monday January twenty second. Second. All right. Any questions, comments, from anybody? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, okay. Moving along, subcommittee reports. Anything from accelerated repair? No. Uh, Ashley Building Committee? Uh, no, only Tuesday. Nothing on communications, finance, Lisa? Um, we are just, uh, we're in discussions and discussing the budget. We are putting together or with our PR firm, we had a meeting um, talking about plans for our website, which they are working on. And I think that we have further follow ups with the PR firm. Yeah. And so that's where we're at. Awesome. Uh, negotiations and personal resources? We have no nothing with negotiations. Well, no, we have a motion oh, to. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, I'm just a bit. <laughs> um, I move that uh, the school committee approve the superintendent. Uh, yes, I move um, the school committee approve the superintendent and human resources director uh, to enter into contract negotiations with sectorial, custodial, and uh, educational support professionals and nurses associations and units and present their recommendation to the full school committee for review and approval. I will second. Any questions? 
All in favor, please say aye. Aye. You want to vote? Make a motion. All right. Anything else on negotiation with personnel? All quiet. Uh, policy, Randy. Okay. Um, I move uh, the fiscal committee approve policy CFE civil rights complaint policy for child nutrition programs, policy HB negotiation legal status. Policy HF School Committee negotiation negotiating agents and CBE superintendent's contract for a first reading. Second. All right. Any questions? How much you All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We're opposed. We're abstention. All right, those policies will go out for a first reading be posted on the website for comments. Yes. Uh, the next three that I have um, are for an adoption. Uh, I have not received any feedback from anybody uh, on these, so I will move that the school committee adopt policy EEAG student transportation and private vehicles, policy EFC free and reduced price. Uh, food services and LB relations with other school and school districts. Second. Okay, any questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Um, just one thing to add, just for the viewing public, is uh, I know there's always comments um, about. Policies and, and things like that. So the policy subcommittee meets regularly to discuss with you. So uh, while we don't necessarily have a lot of discussion in this forum, the policy subcommittee has had a lot of discussion in these policies that have been up for public comment for at least two weeks. Um, this, for the, for, yeah, for the public's knowledge, we usually some of these policies are just changes that the MASC has recommended, and so uh, in the subcommittee, we take a look at the changes that were suggested. Uh, against what we have discussed, uh, what we need in the district, uh, a lot of conversation with those there. Uh, any policies that come up that are either new or um, that we uh, need to change within the district because the things have changed here. Again, we have a lot of that uh, conversation um, with the administration um, on what would be best for the district. And then we'll bring it here. And like I said, it's on the website for at least three weeks. Um, for the general public to go ahead and comment if they have any questions or uh, changes um, or anything like that. Thank you. Anything else at all? Thank you. Any updates from our liaisons, Drew and Dave, or? No updates. Okay. Um, and just so I'm clear, we don't need to vote on. The contract is in the open session, right? Because we're no, not. Um, then yeah. we will at a later date. You want to do the late breaking, unanticipated um, piece? Was there something we had to vote? That, that already. Where is it? Then? Yes. Okay. Any other open business? If not, I will take the motion to. Um, Enter back into the executive session. Uh, do you want me to read it? Yeah, okay. Okay. We didn't bring it into that was an executive session uh, vote. We didn't do our oh. thing. So the uh, oh, yeah. the like basketball. Oh, the oh the basketball things. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was the executive so, reunified re 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 basketball at the middle school. The Unified Basketball at Nisitone because it's to be by programs and Unified uh, Strength Training at the high school. Okay. And that was approving two new uh, stipends. There's more than two because it depends on how many kids sign up. Well, uh, in stipend position. Yes, stipend so, position. Or stipend okay. you know, for the groups. Okay. Um, is there a recommendation at this point in time on how many? Uh, um, so it was for basketball at, at Nisitissit. It was a head coach and potentially an assistant. And at the, here at the high school for the strength training was a head coach and potentially two assistants. Okay. Okay. Um, so 
So I will move that the school committee <clears throat> approve um, a new stipend position for the unified basketball team at Mississippi Middle School with a um, up to uh, or a head coach and an assistant. Is that the way it works? Mm -hmm. Um, and a stipend position for the unified strength and training at the high school with a head and two assistants uh, for uh, this coming semester. Is it? Who want to do it now? It's uh, February. Uh, for this coming semester. Uh, second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. I'm going to open business for anything. All right. And I'll take a motion to re-enter session. We will adjourn this and re-enter. Good or are we coming back in? We will not come back in. In the next session. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We may have to vote no concession. Uh, may, may not. Yeah. So, I don't so, know. Yeah. so you already made a motion to recess. To recess. Yeah. So you can just make the motion to go back into executive back. session. Yeah. Your first motion to go in executive session said you would come back to open session. Yes. So it's kind of so open ended. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm I'm moving to adjourn <laughs> open no, uh, recess, recess. <laughs> Open okay, session. Or recess to go back to the regular session. Yeah. Dave, um, I'll second. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> all those in uh, Russia will call the going to the session. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave. Yeah. Andrew, yeah. Lisa Bloom. Yeah. Lisa Martin. Yeah. Randy. Yeah. Um, it's not a <laughs> problem. Okay. We're going to the session. Um, I would like just to school for this. So, this is that. Okay. stop recording. <laughs> But you can stop recording, anybody online can go off of this.